recognize that no matter how you try to experience and enforce a change, until your mind is renewed, you cannot experience a new life. Somebody here is going to experience a new life. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. So you must have an appetite for God's word. An appetite for God's word. Because it changes your way of thinking. Now let's look quickly at what happens when you engage the word to renew your mind. And this is what we are going to try to focus on this afternoon before we rise and pray. What happens to you when you engage the word to renew your mind? Number one, barriers are broken. Barriers are broken. You see, most of the times the things that resist and seem to stand in our way are internally developed barriers. And those barriers are broken when the word of God is given place. Isaiah chapter 4, 54 verse 1 to 4. It says, sing, O barren, thou that is not bring forth. Break forth into singing, thou that is not travail with child. He said, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Say the Lord, enlarge the place of your tent. He says, stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Lengthen thy cord, strengthen thy stakes. Why? Thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left. Breakthrough outside starts with breakthrough inside. It is when there is a breakthrough inside you that you see a breakthrough outside you. Shout hallelujah. So it begins by breaking barriers. That's what happens when the word of God infiltrates you. Because you begin to think at a higher level. Now, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 11. The Bible tells us there, the scriptures tells us, it said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. It said, neither are my ways, your ways my ways. As high as heaven is from the earth, so are my ways from your ways, and my thoughts from your thoughts. He said, but as the snow comes down and as the rain comes down and waters the earth and does not go back, he says, so shall my word be. It will not return unto me void. So his thoughts and his ways are loaded in his word. And the moment his word enters into you, your low ways and low thoughts are upgraded to his high ways and his high thoughts. So the barriers that stood before you are naturally broken. Shout hallelujah. You are no longer limited. Suddenly you begin to see possibilities where others see limitations. That's what happens when the word of God enters you. Barriers are broken. Barriers are broken. You no longer give explanations that others give. Others give. Somebody has said they are not a failure until you find a reason for it. An excuse to give for it. You don't give excuses or give explanations because you are walking in revelations that have broken barriers inside of you. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now you know something? There are many business people and many career people that as far as they are concerned, as soon as lockdown was announced, breakdown was what they began to imagine. Okay, now that there's lockdown, what can anybody do? We just have to wait. This holy, I've seen people talk about this, that as far as they are concerned, they want to write off 2020, that 2020 did not exist. They say, yeah, we'll just, just write it off. Forget that it ever existed. Because as far as they are concerned, too many conditions out of their control. But you know, at the beginning of this year, God said to his servant, he said, there will be 10,000 churches planted. And just when the church planting was to begin, lockdown started. But it didn't change what God said. God does not adjust his statement based on environmental factors. He didn't change what God said. He still said, it is 10,000. He said, once have I spoken, twice have you heard. God does not need to speak twice. You can hear twice, but he speaks once. Once have I spoken, twice have I heard. The power belongeth to God. So all he said is at the beginning of the year, he said there will be 10,000 churches planted. It has not been seen before. And every factor that you can imagine required was put on hold as it were. When you say lockdown, church planting means that people who will pastor the churches need to move to where they will pastor the churches. Now there was interstate lockdown, inside state lockdown, inside city lockdown, inside town, inside village, 
inside community. There was total lockdown. And here comes God saying, what I say concerning the year is that there will be 10,000 churches planted. He didn't change his statement. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should adjust his statement. As he said it, will he not do it? As he declared it, will he not make it good? He spoke it, and God's servant anchored his faith on it. And as any place opens, boom, dive in, dive in, dive in. And by the time the season ended, it was 10,400 churches that were planted already in the middle of a lockdown year. I want you to understand there is no environmental factor that is responsible for your limitation. There is none. There is no environmental factor that is responsible for your limitation. Don't look for what to blame. Don't look for who to blame. Just settle down and recognize that barriers are first broken when light enters into your heart and breaks those barriers within you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number two thing we discover that happens when we engage the world to renew our mind is that faith is quickened. Faith comes alive. Faith comes alive. Faith comes alive. It comes alive when the word is allowed to enter us. Romans 10 and verse 17. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't keep receiving the word and not begin increasing in faith. The word of God is the, is, is the force that, that, that increases or enlarges our faith. In Acts chapter 14, verse 8 down to verse 10, the Bible talks about a man who was listening to Paul the Apostle. He said, and as Paul looked at him, he saw that he had faith to be healed. How did he get faith to be healed? By hearing the word. As the word was coming, his faith was increasing. And the faith got to a point where it was more than the limitation he was facing. Please hear this. Any mountain you cannot yet scale is because of faith that is not yet grown. The size of your faith determines what you can scale. The size of your faith. I heard this story about Sir Edmund Hillary, the man who eventually was the first to scale Mount Everest, that he tried a couple of times and could not scale it. And the final time he came to that mountain and he said, he looked at the mountain and inside of him he began to talk to himself. You are still the same size but I have changed. You are still the same size, but I've changed. I have grown, I am more skilled, I have more ability, and this time I will scale you. And he climbed that mountain to the peak. The mountain you cannot beat is because faith has not reached its peak yet. When faith reaches its peak on any matter, every mountain is surmountable. You can overcome it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, we need to begin to change our mentality, particularly in the world that we live in today. Be very careful because you will find business associates, career colleagues, and so forth who will keep coming to you and speaking limitation. Can you see how things are? Look at this, our economy. In fact, only God can help anybody. Only, nobody can survive in this environment. And then before you know it, you're also saying, you see, it is true. Why we try, 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 and nothing is working. As you are speaking it, you are framing your mind. And your mind is framing your world. This is what the Bible says, Hebrews 11 and verse 3, by faith. We believe that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things that do appear were made out of things that do not appear. So settle down with God's word, it will build your faith. And your faith will change your world. Somebody here. Is walking into a revolutionary lifestyle from today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number three, creativity is provoked when your mind is renewed by the word. Creativity is provoked. Creativity is provoked. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, We all with open face, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image. In other words, the more we take in God's word, the more like God we become. And one of the vital attributes of God is his wisdom, his creativity. The wisdom of God is unfathomable. You look at it and you discover that God can never be backed into a corner. 
when men think they have cornered God, they see a side of God that they never knew existed. You know, the Bible says that that he said, he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning from verse 7, let's look at this. This was where men thought they have cornered God. He said, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before for our glory. Look at this, verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They were strategizing against God, but the strategy was backfiring. As part of what they were organizing, God had already put it as a stepping stone to the miracle. You can't outthink God. You can't outsmart God. Every time you come to God, you must recognize that when you operate with his word, you begin to operate at his frequency. The wisdom of God begins to manifest through you. I see that becoming somebody's experience here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that frequency of God is the frequency of wisdom. Proverbs 8 and verse 12. Proverbs 8, 12. The Bible says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and will find out the way of witty inventions. So there is inventiveness, creativity that answers when you begin to take in God's word. You are doing the same business but not doing it the same way. Something is different about how you are doing it. Just one little key here, one little key there and suddenly you find yourself catapulted to the top. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Have you not noticed in every market, every item you see are usually clustered together. Those who sell fish, you see them around the same place. Those who sell meat, you see them around the same place. Those who sell vegetables, you see them around the same place. But even though they are all lined up together, you will discover that traffic flows more towards some than others. Is that true? Location is one, not, not what distinguishes them. Wisdom is what distinguishes them. Traffic flows more towards some than others. Because wisdom is at work. And that wisdom, that creative wisdom, answers when the word of God infiltrates your mind. You start thinking at divine frequency. I said I'm becoming somebody's experience from now. Somebody believe it, say a louder amen. I said somebody believe it, say a louder amen. One of the things that amazes me is in the physical you discover Somebody sells what you need beside your house and you will leave your house and go somewhere far to buy it from somebody else. There is something that person is doing with wisdom that is pulling you from your location to despise other options and go to this one as that is the only option. That's, where, that's how wisdom works. Wisdom makes you look like you are the only option. People can't see others. When they saw Jacob, there was no advertisement for prime minister, Joseph. But they said concerning him, where can we find a man like this? They were not looking for a man like that. But when they found a man of wisdom, they could not let him go. From today, wherever you are located, no one will want to let you go. You will become a prime attraction from today in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. So the word of God has the ability to stimulate your mind. It has the ability to upgrade your intellect. Where you begin to think at a frequency that is beyond your natural limitation. I see that becoming somebody's experience from now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say a louder amen. amen. I say, you believe it, say a louder amen. amen. And number four. Number four. Confidence is stimulated by God's word. These are the things that happen when you renew your mind with the word of God. You operate with confidence. You operate with confidence. You operate with confidence. And you see a career person with confidence, they will stand out. You see a business person with confidence, they will stand out. Confidence. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, who is a wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. When wisdom comes from the word of God, there is a change in boldness and in confidence. When you find a person who is operating with this dimension of wisdom, they can't sit in an interview and not stand out. When even the way they sit, they know this is the person we are looking for. They go to make presentations and suddenly they are simply the attraction. Because there is a sense of confidence that is emanating through them because of the light of God's word inside of them. Shout hallelujah. Somebody's story here is changing. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. What we are saying, therefore, is that it's not where you live that determines the level of your business or career breakthrough. It is how you think. It's not where you live. It is how you think. And how you think is influenced by the entrance of his word. My prayer today is that for each one of us from today, there will be an insatiable appetite for the word of God entering your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take note of this. We live in a thinker's world. It is thinkers that rule in the business and the career world. We live in a thinker's world. We live in a thinker's world. We live in a thinker's world. It is thinkers that rule in business and in career. So, position yourself to begin to think at the frequency of God and you'll find yourself operating in a supernatural sphere. Please hear this. There is no greater advantage in your business or career endeavor than your kingdom mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, he said, you have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. So by redemption, there is an upgrading capacity. What is required now is to engage that capacity by infiltrating it with the word of God. And then by doing so, you begin to see your mind operating at heavenly frequency. From this day onward, no one here will be limited anymore. Amen. You believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I say, you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. So if you can think it, you will see it. If you can think it, you will see it. If you can think it, you will see it. Do you know there are people who will still get jobs today? If you can think it, you will see it. There are those who will still get miracle contracts today. If you can think it, you will see it. He said, now is the accepted time. And now is the day of salvation. God will not be more powerful tomorrow than he is today. He will not be more powerful in the next hour than he is this hour. If you can think it, you will see it. It's all about how your mind is allowed to operate. You see, so many are trained in limitation. Their minds have been limited for so long. That as far as they are concerned, you know, breakthrough doesn't happen that quickly. It just happens gradually. It just happens gradually. But remember the, 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 what we heard about turnaround this, this morning. That is an abrupt change. An abrupt positive change. Abrupt means sudden. Not gradually, but suddenly. There's somebody hearing me this afternoon that there will be a sudden change of story for you. I said there will be a sudden change of story for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are going to go before God and we are going to begin to activate our minds by the Spirit of God. Lord, whatever is causing my mind to be limited, I decree it broken today by the operation of the Spirit. You are going to go before your, the Lord and present your mind as it were to God for the cleansing of the mind, for the purging of the mind, for the, for the liberty of the mind to be established today. Lift your voice and pray that prayer in your seated position right now. Pray that prayer. My mind must be set free. My mind must be set free. The limitations must be broken today. I've heard your word. Your word is the hammer breaking in pieces the rock. My mind must be set free. My mind must be set free. It must be set at liberty today. In the name of Jesus. Must be set at liberty today. In the name of Jesus. Must be set at liberty today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Now, before we go any further this afternoon, the foundation of God requires the salvation of man. Until you are born again, all that we have said will simply be theoretical. Everything we have spoken about are the right of the redeemed. There are some of us who are hearing me today that the reason why your business has not been going the way it should go is because you don't truly yet belong to God. I'm not talking about whether you go to church. There are many church goers who are not God dwellers. They don't stay with God. I'm talking about whether truly you belong to God or not. There is nothing worse than self-deception. If anyone will deceive you, don't deceive yourself. If you know that you need to get it right with Jesus, you need to surrender to him. You need to be born again. Quickly rise on your feet now. 
I want to pray with you. Quickly, on your feet, everywhere. 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 On your feet right now. You know you need to give your life to Jesus. Quickly rise on your feet all over this place. Give Jesus a big hand for them as they rise everywhere. God bless you. Remain standing where you are. Remain standing where you are. Now listen to this. There are those who have given their lives to Christ in the past. Something has gone wrong somewhere. You have missed it. You have gone off course. Some of you, even in business, you have, your legs have taken you to strange places. You have gone to strange places in the search for breakthrough. You can't hold God and hold Satan together. You can't serve two masters. You're either with one or with the other. Some have gone off course like that. But you want to get it right. There are others that maybe you have not strayed physically, but your heart has strayed from God. You have found yourself overwhelmed and perhaps you found yourself disconnected. You can't sense your connectivity to God anymore. Your heart has gone, gone, grown cold. It has waxed dull. And you want to return so that you can be restored. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus quickly on your feet now. I want to pray with you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Quickly, quickly on your feet. Quickly on your feet. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. As they rise everywhere, it's worthy of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let anything hold you back. Don't let anything hold you down. This is time to take your life in your hand and present it to Jesus. Quickly, right now, on your feet, join the understanding as we get set to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Now, suspend filling your form for a moment. Lift up your right hand and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me loud and clear, Lord Jesus. Louder, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you. Turn him back. I will serve you, no turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious ones. They have come today and surrender unto you. And we ask, Lord, that your grace that has drawn them to you will keep them following you of the days of their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a brand new day for you. Make sure you complete the form given to you and submit it to the officials and you can then take your seat as soon as you do so. Please make sure the forms are completed and submitted to the officials. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we all rise on our feet, everybody? Lift your hand to heaven and first give glory to God for his word that you have received. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Give glory to God for his word that you have received. Give glory to God. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you for your word that we have received. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Give glory to God and give praise to his name. Thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. By the encounter of today, there will be a dramatic turn around in your business and career. Everything that looked like a limitation around you shall be broken right now. <laughs> Can the stewards get to the table? We are going to be engaging the mystery of the anointing. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 and in verse 27. The Bible tells us there in that day, it said the burden shall be taken off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of the anointing, the yoke shall be destroyed. Because 
of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke is a limiting force. It holds you captive. It keeps you caged. It keeps you limited. But God is saying when the anointing comes, yokes are supernaturally destroyed. I don't know what may have been a yoke to your business, to your career, but by this anointing today, it will be instantly destroyed. That means that by the anointing today, you are receiving a turnaround testimony. In the name of Jesus. Now, whatever turnaround you desire by this anointing, speak to God about it right now. Make your decree concerning it. Make your decree concerning it. Speak to him right now. 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 By this anointing, I desire a turnaround in my business. Limitation must be broken in the name of Jesus. Limitations must be broken right now. Right now. Right now. Not tomorrow. Now. Now. Not tomorrow. Make sure you are making clear demands. Make sure you are making clear demands. Make sure you are making clear demands. Make your demand of what must happen right now. Right now. This moment. This hour. This moment. This hour. Right now. Father, we say thank you. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Shiloh oil that we're engaging here this afternoon. And that means that the unction that backs Shiloh 2020, the turnaround grace, is what is coming your way right now. Amen. By this anointing, there shall be supernatural turnaround. Amen. I want you to target just one thing that must happen today now just one thing and as the oil comes on you because the oil will come round you place it upon your head and begin to prophesy and decree the delivery of that thing and as you declare it it will come to pass now father in accordance with your word we decree and declare this as the holy anointing oil lord by it let your spirit go to work your turnaround spirit let it go to work on our behalf and deliver turnaround testimonies to everyone here in the name of the Lord Jesus. We decree and declare it done in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare it done in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare it done in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we decree and declare it done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is settled in Jesus' name. This is blessed as the holy anointing oil in Jesus precious name take your seat right now begin making your decrees and declaration as the oil comes just one touch and on your head and then suddenly begin to de make your decree take your seat take your seat everyone take your seat take your seat focus on making your decrees and doing so in faith focus on making your decrees and doing so in faith Focus on making your decree. You are declaring, not watching. You are not keeping silent. If you are watching, then you are not positioning yourself for the experience that you desire. Right now, make your decree. 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 Make your decree right now. 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 In the name of Jesus.
Make your decree. Make your declaration. Speak forth in faith. Speak forth in faith. Command that business to open up. Command that career to open up. Call for that expectation. The expected contract, the expected text message, whatever it is you are expecting, call it for right now. Call it for right now. Call it for right now. It's happening already. 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 You are upon this mountain. It's happening already. Thank you, Jesus. It's happening already. It's happening already. It's happening already. Thank you, Jesus. It's taking place right now. 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 It's happening already. Hallelujah. That miracle job is loosed. That business is loosed. In the name of Jesus. It's loosed right now. That stagnation is broken. In the name of Jesus. Make your decrees. And make your declaration. Thank you Lord Jesus. If you have been anointed you can stand on your feet. As you are issuing your decrees right now. Issuing your decrees right now. Glory to Jesus. Lift your hands and begin to give thanks. I appreciate him and give him the glory. I appreciate him and give him the glory. I appreciate him and give him the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lift your hands right now. In the name of Jesus, by this encounter, I decree every closed door open to you in the name of Jesus. You have come to this mountain of turnaround. I declare instant turnaround now in the name of Jesus. Every barrier and every yoke that has kept you stranded in your business, stranded in your career, by this encounter, the yoke is destroyed. I decree the release of miracles to you right now. Miracle jobs are released to you right now. Miracle promotions are released to you right now. Miracle contracts are released to you right now. In the name of Jesus, I decree messages of divine favor coming your way right now in the name of Jesus. Every yoke that has kept you bound, I decree destroyed. There are some hearing me that you have been trying in business, but before you know it, there is one breakdown in your health that seems to limit it. But today I decree every health issue, every sickness, every weakness, every disease, every pain, every discomfort, I decree them destroyed in the name of Jesus. I decree them destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every Every repeated failure in any area of life, repeated failure, you give people help, it works for them. But when it's your turn, it does not work for you. I decree that today marks an end for it forever. In the name of Jesus, by this encounter, walk into liberty. By this encounter, walk into liberty. By this encounter, walk into liberty. In the name of Jesus Christ. It has happened already. I said it has happened already. We're going to praise God. We're going to celebrate God for a few moments. I know certain things have happened. There are some of you who check your phone. Messages have come in. Oh, things are already happening on your behalf. Something is turning already. Something is turning already. Some of you came with certain conditions in your body that have been disturbing you. In moving forward it's already disappeared we are going to praise god just few moments you have a testimony you want to share you jump out quickly we pick up those testimonies remember you are giving glory to god not to anyone no one can do anything only god does all things we are going to celebrate in few moments you rush out you have a testimony and then you share it very quickly and then we conclude for this afternoon
praised him. Please lead us. Let's celebrate him. Quickly, you have a testimony. Rush out. Don't waste time. Rush out. And then we we'll take it very quickly. Glory to God. Jehovah turns my life around. Jehovah turns my life around. He makes no way.
Hallelujah. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and a loud shout is worthy in Jesus' precious name. Please take your seat for a moment. We'll just read a few of these testimonies and then we'll close. Hallelujah. Lydia or Mobuda, she came here jobless, but right here, while the ministry was going on, she received a call. That somebody called out to come and take capital to start a business. Give God a big hand. Franca Anthony. She came here being mocked by our people in the place. They gave her two weeks quit notice to quit her shop. But right here after the administration, that same landlady called her to come take up another shop to silence our mockers. Give God a big hand. Miriam Chaskida Godfrey, she came here with one month abdominal pains, which has been troubling her. But after the administration, the pains disappeared instantly. Come on, give God a big hand. If that hand is for Jesus, it will be louder, it will be bigger. Rise on your feet one more time. Lift your hand to heaven and let's give glory to God. Appreciate him, glorify him. Is what your praise. Father, thank you and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The meaning of those instant testimonies that your own is already settled. <laughs> Whatever has been pending in your own life is already settled. <laughs> By the time you are arriving at tomorrow's business and career turnaround class, you are here with your turnaround testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, lift your hands. As you go, be blessed of the Lord. Go in peace and return with testimonies. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, it is done. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Jesus is Lord. Don't forget, we have our um, encounter night kicking off at 7 p.m. So we have some time between now and then. Make sure you utilize the time appropriately. Make sure you are engaging with God, connecting with God. God will be visiting you upon this mountain and you are returning from this mountain with multiple turnaround testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hand to heaven one more time and give glory to God. Father, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of honor. Give him thanks, give him praise. Keep giving God thanks, magnify the Lord, give him praise. 
for the encounters of this first first business and career breakthroughs. Wave your hands to Jesus. Somebody is still giving thanks. As you are thanking God, your testimony is coming with speed. Your testimonies are coming with speed. Wave your hands to Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Still give God thanks. Somebody give God more thanks. Are you tired of giving God thanks? The more you thank, the faster the delivery of your testimony. Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Our God deserves our praise. Give him all the praise. Our God deserves our worship. He has done great things. If you are confident, if you are persuaded, give him all the praise. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we together share the goodness in fellowship? Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. You are blessed. Give the Lord praise.